Hey everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at round off error or number in precision when you're trying to store values as doubles and floats. Now you know that when numbers are stored, the computer is using binary to store this value in memory. And binary has slots like 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Now if you do a decimal number, after the decimal you have slots like 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 16, right? And it goes on and on. Now you can only use so many slots because every number is given a certain amount of space in memory. Some numbers may keep track of uh, 32 bits, some may be using 64 bits, you know, the number of ones and zeros that are used. Either way, some numbers just can't be accurately stored as a binary number with the limited number or even if you had an infinite number of the binary slots. So here's a little example. You'll see here in my example one, I'm just taking one plus a tiny little number, I add them up, well I know that number is not 1. It's a little bit bigger than 1. But when I do my printout here, it says C is 1. Now this just isn't a little, little, little rounding for the system out. When I do my if statement, is C 1? C does equal 1, and look, C does equal 1. So it's actually storing the number 1 in memory. So this is already too, uh, an inaccurate storage of the double C. And just to show you this happens with a lot of other numbers, I'm going to scroll down here to example three. This is the, maybe a banking program, just adding four simple money numbers together here that have a little tiny decimal, okay, not outrageous. I add them all, I subtract two of them, I print out the total. The answer should be that. But you're going to see here the answer that's displaying in the system out somehow became that. Now I don't know where along the line the imprecision error occurred, but it occurred. Okay, And so it just goes to show you that this is happening and you don't even know it and you can start getting numbers that start becoming numbers you don't like. So imagine you're doing a space program and the satellite's going for years and years, you're calculating values, slowly that inaccuracy can start to build up. Uh, a banking program, you're doing a bunch with money, and all of a sudden, you're getting these little errors. Uh, you probably heard stories, people doing this kind of stuff in banking code, and those little inaccuracies add up to a big value, and the person sneaks that money out of the bank account. Uh, just to show you it happens with very typical values, check this out here. Find bad numbers. I've just done a little loop here. 1 to 10, 1 to 50. I go x divided by y, y divided by x. Any good math student's going to tell you, well, if I now take those two numbers and multiply them, you should be back exactly to 1, unless there's imprecision. So check this out. I'm printing out all the cases here where it didn't equal 1. So these are the imprecision errors. And check this out. Even like 1 and 49, it didn't work. 2 and 49 didn't work. 3 and 11 didn't work. So, I mean, you can keep scrolling here. Just with that little subset of numbers I did, these are all the cases where the numbers did not get you back exactly to 1. And look at it. Sometimes you're 2 off. Who knows how far you off there. It's unpredictable. So how do programmers account for this? There's a few different ways. Uh, one way is when you're actually checking for quality, because you now know that your if statement doing this is not reliable uh, when you're working with your decimals, you can do something like this. You can write a method. I've just called this one really equal. And I take the two numbers that I'm trying to check if they're equal, and I do a little tolerance okay, of 1,000th, right, 0 0.001. And so what happens here is now I get to put my numbers in. It'll start at A. It'll go a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and I just check if B is within that range. So what this method is really doing is when I'm checking for a quality, I'm checking to see are they within that close. And if they are within that close, it's going to return true, basically saying they're equal. So you'll see here, the really equal test is true. And the test I gave it was actually this pair of 1 and 49 that I know doesn't work. So 1 over 49 times 49 over 1. I test it compared to 1, and it says equal. If you needed more precision, you could either, you know, add a couple more zeros there, you know, if you really need to, or do whatever you have to do for your test, right? But that's the basic idea. It's something to be aware of when you're coding. That's one way to deal with it. Another way you might want to look up that I won't cover here is there are classes that have been written to deal with numbers that have a lot of decimals. 
One of them is called Big Decimal. It's built into Java. You can just import it. And it lets you set things like the precision that you're working with. And so it'll uh, round up or round down, and you can change the settings. And it'll do the math for you. And this imprecision won't be as annoying for you. Anyways, that's a little introduction to it. Just uh, throw that idea in your head. Thanks for watching.